Welcome to this series of videos where we talk to Dr. Warren Corns, who's Research and Technical Support Manager at PS Analytical, about uh, mercury and the various issues to do with mercury in the environment and analysis of mercury. Warren, um, you s mentioned earlier about mercury speciation. Perhaps you could explain a bit more about what that is. Yes, well, uh, most samples will contain different forms of mercury and traditionally when we measure mercury we determine a total amount but that doesn't actually tell the story about uh, what's actually uh, present in the sample so um, there's a uh, approach that we use called speciation uh, which normally involves some sort of front-end uh, chromatographic system uh, which allows us to separate the different mercury compounds uh, prior to detection so for example we could look at methyl mercury in fish as, a, as, a, as opposed to looking at just mercury total in the fish and then this will give us actually more information about how toxic that mercury would be in that type of sample. So different types of mercury got different toxicity so it's valuable to know which type of mercury is in the Exactly, sample. yes. And um, if we have a better understanding of the speciation we could understand how the mercury is being cycled in the environment uh, because uh, the transportation and the fate of this mercury depends on the species. Um, a typical, another good example of this would be, for example, if you looked at the arsenic levels in fish, for example, very high arsenic in fish, but it's present as arsenobetaine, which is an organic form of arsenic, which is non-toxic. So the general public, when they see these high levels of arsenic being reported as totals, could be quite concerned. But in reality, the arsenic in fish is uh, chemically benign and is non-toxic. Um, so understanding the speciation is very important.